brothers and sisters, comrades and friends, I'm Cuba Libre. Welcome back to Let's Play Mark of the Ninja. I'm going to be moving on to stage four here. A change in course. Time for some new upgrades here. Twilight Gate. This allows you to kill people directly through a door. T can be useful. Bat's Prey allows you to stealth kill people while hanging above them and dropping down on top of them. That is amazingly useful. <laughs> and then this just is a little bonus. It makes your lock picking go a lot faster. Not hugely useful, but me, It's something. <laughs> Once again, I pretty much always go with the smoke Uncle bomb. Kelly, would you care for a sip of these Rizzling Swatch Lees? Just because it of the laser to Otto Van killing Bismarck. properties. I traded a cargo of body armor just to see how it would taste. So, how is it? Hmm. A bit tart. My men in the field were waiting for that body armor. Half of them were cut to ribbons. Ah. <sighs> So, this was more expensive than I thought. Look, we've got a problem. These ninjas... These peasants! They are no match for us! Maybe so, but they pack a punch. This one with the flashy tattoos. He's slipping past our lines. No drama. He's just one man. And he should only need one bullet. I want you to take care of him, personally. Yes, sir. That's the tower, but it's under heavy guard. I have an idea. If we can set that building on fire, the blaze will draw every guard in the complex. So the you idea the is... the story of Sawayama Castle, right? Mm. That may have been hundreds of years ago, but this really isn't that different. I have no idea what you're talking about, but what I do know is that I'm down to blowing shit up. So let's go do that. <laughs> Always do a little hangman sim when it's available. Get them 600 points. So you can really grind. 200 for the undetected bonus. 600 for the hangman's him. And then Look, 250 more another for equipment cache. hiding him. This is our first attack item, the spike mines. Normal enemies, it will just kill them if they walk over it. It does make a little bit of a noise once you use it. Um, and this situation is designed so that you have to use it, basically. <laughs> No way to, uh. No real way to get past that guy without alerting him. You can't jump over his head. There's too much light. So you distract the birds, and he walks right over the spike mine. Boom. You get 600 points for killing someone with an attack tool. Um. The problem with spike mines, of course. They can catch your slightest twitch. So when you sleep across you, stand still. And now there's a new mechanic, motion sensors. Again, uh, all you have to do is stand still, and they will not go off. You can also use a guard's body. The guards are again, uh, sort of have whatever signal thingies on them that prevent the motion detectors from going off, just like the laser. So you can drag a guard's body through a motion detector without setting it off. At any rate, the problem with spike mines. These old buildings usually have a oh, gas main in the basement. Start a leak, and we can spread the gas to the rest of the building. Yeah, so I had to do this a couple times. This is kind of a little, tough little thing to get through. The motion sensor is a problem. You have to walk kind of halfway down the stairs and then halfway again. If those guys see you in the meantime, it's a problem. No, you just take your time, it's okay. You blow out the light. I definitely did not mean to get the dog there, but I'm sort of glad that I did. The flushing daimyo. 
leaves his bed to find relief and never return. Because now, you know, the dog's smelling is much more... Uh, the dog is much better at detecting you than the guards are, put it that way. At least in an unalarmed state. So, um, getting rid of the dog first, silently, which is tough to do because of the smelling, uh, is, is very nice if you can pull it off. I just need to wait for this guy to get back through the motion detector and we can kill him. Now, the, the problem with spike mines, as I was saying, is that, of course, the a guard has to be moving in order to kill him with it. And usually, when guards move, it's easy enough to... Um, to take them out just with a regular old stealth kill. They'll eventually move somewhere where they're alone and you can get to them. It's guards that stand still that are the biggest problem, and that's exactly where spike mines don't help you. Position 13, any contact? 13, you copy. 13, In order to... Oh, bloody hell. Oh, come on. <laughs> In order to, uh... kill a, a stationary guard with a spike mine, you have to make him move. So basically, for the spike mines to be really useful, they take two actions. You need to distract the guard and make him move somehow. And then We've kill got... him. Pipes, vents. We could use these to start a fire. A so I'm just looking at uh, big fire. Looking at my goals here, since I didn't do that at the beginning. Um. So there are more. The other just attack items are more useful, in my opinion, because you can just use them straight out and kill people with them. One advantage of a spike mine, if one soldier sees another soldier get killed by a spike mine, it will terrorize him. Um, one problem with it, if you throw it, if you, you put it in the light, the guards will see it and that shoot it. Is drawing in the gas. Open a few of the vents upstairs, and we'll be ready to turn this place into an inferno. So, now we have to open these vents. Now, you only have to open three of them to beat the level, but there's six of them to do, and one of the bonus objectives... The gas is leaking. Now we need to spread it throughout the building. Go find the vents that lead up to the basement six. and open them wide. Three should do it. But opening more will make a bigger... distraction. Well, okay, there you go. She just said the same thing. But anyways, it's a bonus objective to do that. Show off how the spike mines work. Who's up there? See now, this is interesting. There's multiple light switches. He actually goes to the one that's closest to him, which is behind him. I was anticipating that he would come towards me and walk into the spike mine. Uh, but you can also see that if you don't use the spike mine once you deploy it, you can pick it back up. So at least they're not wasted. And this is an interesting little room. Once again, there's two light switches. So you can turn off the lights there, but the guy will walk backwards into the motion sensor to turn them back on. So... I have to pull some cleverness here. We'll see what that noise was over there. Whoa. Now I'm lucky enough that this little stealth kill canned animation sends me s jumping outside the range of the, uh, the motion detector, which is uh, pretty handy, all things considered. I'll just use the guard to get through without stopping. And there I just fucked up once with the stupid button press, so I just skipped it. Wasn't worth showing. Another interesting situation. Anytime you throw a dog into the mix, it's an interesting tactical situation. And the motion sensors make everything worse, too, as you might imagine. They limit your freedom of movement. <clears throat> I'm planning on terrorizing this guy with his body. Hold up. Jesus, what the hell? It totally works. Now, it also terrorizes that dude all the way on the left, which I did not anticipate. 
he shoots the crap out of that other guy in the back. That's 600 points. Very nice. I think that's the first time I've done that in these series of videos. I don't remember exactly, but... Now the dog's distracted, so it can be taken out without alerting. All that's left is this terrified guy. Easy pickings. And here is our first gas grate. This is what they look like. Five more to go. You'll see, if your resolution's high enough, you can see the little numbers on the signs on the walls. They actually say, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six. <clears throat> it lets you uh, keep track of which ones you've done. Now this is an interesting little mechanical whatever. So that power box turns off these lights, so you just need to get under the laser, right? No. So what happened there is that the actual animation of you throwing the dart sort of stretches out your character sprite horizontally and it put me into the laser, which is bullshit. <laughs> but it's something to keep in mind, so I stand farther back this time. So that when I throw the dart, it doesn't uh, do the same thing. Always check random corners. You'll probably find something good. Here's a little... I guess I'd call it a platforming challenge. It's sort of like platforming, I suppose. Boom. The hand at the rest. One bride, a lover, no ears. Lie still, arm open. I just want to emphasize again how terrible the poetry readings are. Like the guy just he just splits it up line by line. We need to open one more. Hurry before they figure out what we're up to. No thought at all for a natch for either the rhythm of it or than a natural reading of the words even. Uh, it's, it's, it's just terrible, and it really it bugs me. Clearly, this game is not a game about poetry, so it, it's not really worth being bugged about, but what can I say? I'm a stickler. Now, I don't really have anything new to get, so I just refill my junk. Call it a day. Now this is pretty lucky. He just barely sees you when you come out, but not enough to alert. Then you, it gives you enough time to stealth kill that guy. Then he'll see his corpse, walk over to it, and then you can kill him too. It basically gets him out of the range of that motion detector, which would be a problem otherwise. Gas leaking all over the building. Get maintenance here now. Oh, maintenance won't show okay. in time, my friend. That's but they're starting to get suspicious. We need to get to the roof. Okay, that was me trying to jump up on top of the wall for no reason. Or just to see if something was there, but obviously nothing is. Ah yes, these guys' maintenance crews never quite fast enough. To the roof. Yeah, I fucked up again. You'll see why in a second here. This is a pretty tough little situation. <clears throat> There's a dog, which makes things difficult. There's lights, a dog, it's... Now luckily, this guy will patrol into the spike mine. I've talked some shit about spike mines, but they're not all terrible. Now the dog is going to find the corpse, but luckily the dog is the only thing left so he can bark all at once. All I need to do is figure out how to deal with it without getting into the motion detector. So I just have it, it actually hits me, I lose all the life. Upper left hand corner, the little diamonds, ninja stars, whatever, those are your life points, so you just took one. Doesn't happen very often when you're going for a stealth playthrough like mine, but... 
There you go. So that's taken care of. Now this fucking place. One of the bonus seals in this level <coughs> is to kill two enemies with the same uh, falling object. Now there's that chandelier in the middle there, right above the grate. And there's the two guys patrolling around. Clearly, this is the setup. This is the point of the level that you're supposed to get that seal. But for whatever reason, when I played the first time through, they were right next to each other, very easy to get. This time they're farther apart, so it's actually really hard to hit both of them with the one chandelier. If I was to just do it right now, it would only kill one of them. So I tried a few things. I, I had to reload a few times to try and figure it out. I ended up just saying, why not use the smoke bomb in the hopes that it'll just mess up their patrol patterns and they'll randomly cross over each other at a time where I can kill them both. And it turns out it actually works. <laughs> Barely. You'll see that the one guy is just in the radius, but it does get them both. So that's that seal done. Now the rest of this room is, again, easy pickings. It would be easy if you didn't have to get that seal, too. But, in the corner, we have our challenge room for our last scroll. Alright, well, <clears throat> there's not much to this one. Um, you pretty much just go where you can, and press what you can, and it gets you through. It looks more complicated than it is. Uh, the only... place where the path forks is right here. Uh, you really have to go left first to get that other power box. You see, because that the other power box gets rid of the last horizontal laser closing off the, uh, the scroll at the very top. So you just have to go around sort of twice. You have to go up the right side to blow up that power box, then then down and around and up the left side to blow up that power box. That gets better rid of both of the lasers at the top, and then you can just go grab the, the scroll again. It looks more complicated than it is. Now you go back around again, <laughs> and you can grab it. Okay, so actually the power box is for some other laser, not one of the top Nightingale ones, but whatever, sing. you get the point. From the floor they're quarreling, heralds an escape. Actually the challenge rooms I feel are a really missed opportunity in this game. Um, clearly the, the idea of them is that they are just straight platforming challenges with no guards or anything. Um, no, no actual stealth elements, you're just using the acrobatic elements of the skill set. Which is a good idea in theory. Um, but they're all way simpler and easier than they ought to be. They're all very linear in the sense that like you just kind of do what you can do and it works. They're actually mostly not platforming challenges. They are... a lot of them are more puzzles, but the puzzles are simple because you just do what you can. The ones that are actually challenging, of which there's a couple, are, are more fun. Here's a platforming challenge right here. So the power box is in the other, on the right hand side of that room, and there's that little wall blocking my way. So you gotta just be quick, get all the way over. Thank God for the grapple. That's all I gotta say about that. You're right, bud. Someone did sabotage you, and it was me. I sabotaged you. Just check and make sure I got all my seals. Nothing over there. That fuse panel doesn't look too sturdy. No, it doesn't. Frozen. 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 Frozen.
I don't think climbing on this sparking transformer is a great idea, but it doesn't seem to matter, so there we go. Boom. And now you run. It's funny, she doesn't tell you to run for a while. And then it gives you time limits, but if you just run as soon as it's stressful enough. So run. You can like get to the end by the time she even s tells you to start running. <laughs> so there we go, it's another one down, all nine seals. I actually like that one a lot. It's got a nice little, um... Like, each grate is its own little sort of challenge, stealth challenge room, and then you just go on to the next one. Um, it's a nice little bite-sized uh, <coughs> challenges that play to the strengths of the game, really. Uh, big contiguous areas are, are cool too, but I don't know, there's something about this game that makes bite size better. Anyways, my name's Cuba Libre. That's it for episode 4 of Let's Play Mark of the Ninja, and I will see you next time. Peace out.